Well, I'm a retired architect and uh, my husband John and I ran our own practice for many years and that included a, a lot of conservation work. And there wasn't a lot of information available about conservation work as there is now. And I started to read up and find out what I could and I was very interested to find out exactly how people lived and what their houses were like. And that led to my interest in wallpaper and decoration of interiors of houses. Well, I think the first thing that surprised me was the incredible colour, because people often think of Victorian interiors as being brown and dark. And I think a lot of that is due to uh, dirt, of course, and the fact that uh, a lot of wallpapers were varnished um, and the old varnish that they used tended to brown off and it gave everything a sort of brown look. And you only have to look at some of the papers that I have collected to see these absolutely marvellous colours. Victorians loved ornamentation and patterns and everything was um, decorated. And I get rather amused at the very uninhibited combination of patterns and then the um, upholstery on the chairs would be patterned and the curtains would be patterned and the wallpapers and the ceilings and then there'd be um, several colours used on the woodwork or light and dark stains. I've had people say to me, oh but they're so elaborate these humble little cottages but I don't think they actually were. They were humble not in fact, because I think sometimes they were quite well-off farmers who lived there and lived quite well, but all they had was a very modest house and they made the most of it. And I think the home was very important. And I, I, I was at first amazed to find so many country cottages that had all this elaborate um, wallpapering. There was one that I went to and it had an 1850s newspaper behind it because they often used newspaper as the first lining. And it was some um, beautiful red flock. And this was just a very modest farmhouse. And this was the, I suppose, their parlour. It wouldn't have been a drawing room. But it meant that the house was so important. And I'm sure, you know, all their social activities were around the home and very different from today where many homes are just functional, aren't they? Some quite well-known artists were employed, like Walter Crane and um, the French employed a lot, of their, a lot of their artists. But as the years went by and um, after the Industrial Revolution, they were all printed instead of being hand-blocked, I think... Um, they just had big factories with trained artists working in them, but not people who'd been painting pictures or anything. But uh, yes, there's a great deal of artistry required. This is a fascinating little one. It's a small book. Normally they're this size, but this one's for the traveller or the salesman. And it's got very tiny samples, but lots of them and beautiful, um, beautiful borders. Look at the lovely colours, gold backgrounds. And these were not for wealthy houses. These were just normal sort of what I'd have in my house. <laughs> Early in the century, the, the blocks, the design was cut out on the wooden block. And uh, originally they just did it all by hand, but then they started um, with the, they, used pulleys and the, and the blocks came down and printed. So it was a simple assistance to the printing. And if I come across a block printed paper, I can recognise it because of the surface. It's like, almost like poster colour, whereas these are all mechanically printed. And then with the Industrial Revolution, they started the roller printing and mechanical and... May, and the prices came down, so of course more and more was sold, and I think that's also why it became so popular. 
An enormous quantity was used in the late Victorian period and I was interested, uh, we did work on the Collingwood Town Hall and of course that had a lot of <coughs> stencils and stencil work and so on but the um, engineer's room was wallpapered originally and I thought that was interesting and maybe some of the other officers were too but that was the only one we came upon. And I remember too, um, in a bluestone mill out of Canton, the mill manager's office uh, had an 1860s wallpaper in it. Which, and I knew that because the, um, I found newspaper behind it, 1860. Well, this one, I believe, came from a painter and decorator in Fitzroy um, and was, I think, in the basement that's probably why it's rather damaged, but still it has survived. So um, these are just probably not quite as good quality as those, I think, just by the paper, because I've got very interested in the paper that they're printed on as well as, um, as, well as the designs. But they're just oh, the sort of things that, yes, would be in... Um, anybody's house and it's very interesting the way they were designed they'd often have different flowers coming from this different species coming from the same stems you know it was very uninhibited sort of design a lot of the papers were used although they're very f elaborate and flowery they were used in quite an architectural way the dado was usually darker often used in a um, dining room and it was meant to sort of have the heavy, darker furniture against it. And there is something interesting about that. It's designed so that it can, if it's in the hall, it can go up the stairs because it has this, this um, sort of all over pattern, the top and the bottom, and you, that can be cut. And then the panels sort of go up the stairs and follow the line. And then the frieze went around the top of the wall under the ceiling, so it accentuated the ceiling. Um, and what else? Sometimes panels with small borders around them. So um, it was very interesting, really, uh, to me, the way they were used. And they're very much fashions, you know, they change perhaps in 10 years' time to suddenly be all Art Nouveau and, quite, and the old designs would be uh, out of date. And that's why I've found layers and layers, one on top of another. Oh, well, this is where I keep them. Um, I've got these ones numbered so I can find what I'm looking for. A lot of these are just smaller samples that I've collected or been given and I keep them in mylar bags. Sometimes I um, don't get a full repeat and I have to piece it together see, and mend it. Well, I think it's just told me such a lot about uh, how people lived and what they had around them. Um, it's most fascinating and I love the designs, I love the colours and people um, say which is your favourite but really I love them all. <laughs>